Hello everybody, so I'm Zoe and my favourite mega number is this. Uh, and so there's a story about why this is my favourite mega number. It's a story about lockdown uh, and it's a story about excitement and emotion. And it starts with me getting very interested in Pascal's triangle. Uh, and so Pascal's triangle, as you know, is it's wonderful, it's full of patterns. So we've got the triangular numbers here, we've got powers of two here if we add up the cells in each row. Uh, and if you just read across the cells in each row, we get the powers of 11. Uh, we've even got fractals if you look carefully enough. So the list goes on for the patterns you can find. Uh, but this story isn't about those patterns. This story is about how often particular numbers repeat in Pascal's triangle. That's what I'm interested in. Um, and so we know, for example, that the ones repeat an infinite number of times because that triangle goes on forever. Uh, and there are other trivial repeats. So we've got, obviously the triangle is symmetrical, uh, which means that every positive integer repeats at least twice because it appears in these diagonals twice in any specific row. Um, and so I'm not interested in those repeats. I'm interested in interesting ones like, like this one. This one is the first interesting repeat I could find. We've got two sixes in different rows. Um, and the cells of Pascal's triangle can be defined by combinatorics. So we can talk about how many different ways there are of choosing things from a bigger group. Uh, and so for example, that top six is how many different ways there are of choosing two things from a group of four. Um, so it's four choose two. Uh, it's four choose two because we count from zero. So I'm counting from zero down to four in the rows and I'm counting from zero into two uh, inwards. Um, so four choose two. Um, and there's a formula for that. So actually each of these cells in the triangle uh, can be found using this formula, uh, where n is uh, the size of the group and r is the number of things that you're choosing. And so you can check out those two sixes. Um, they work, put the values for n and r, and you'll see that these two sides do equate. Um, so that's all good, but I'm interested in what other numbers there are that do this. So which other numbers repeat an interesting number of times and where do they appear and is, is there some pattern to that? So I was, I was thinking about this, thinking how, how, can I, um, how can I go about investigating that? Uh, and then I remembered I've told you this story is something to do with lockdown. Um, so during lockdown to keep myself busy, I was trying to teach myself Python um, and I did that with some, some level of success. Um, so I, I, know, I know some rudimentary Python and I thought, oh, well, there we go. This is a good uh, task for me to do to practice my Python skills. So I thought I'm going to try and find which different numbers repeat lots of times in Pascal's triangle uh, using Python. So I did that. So I wrote some code um, and that code essentially just works out, just computes all of the cells in Pascal's triangle. Obviously not the whole thing, um, up to about, I think it was about row 500 was where my computer decided to uh, to stop. If I went much further than that, it took, took far too long. Uh, so I went to about row 500. Um, and actually I wasn't computing all of the cells, I was ignoring these diagonals because we know what the numbers in those diagonals are. So I'm computing all of the cells and the computer is then just checking how many times each different number repeats. Um, and so, and I've got the results of that, uh, which I'll show you in just a second. Um, if you're getting excited about my code, don't be. Um, it's, uh, it's like entry level code, but if you are interested, I've put uh, a link to it in the description below. Um, so it's not great, but it does the job, right? I've got the results. I'm going to have a look at those now. And so the first thing I discovered was that there's a huge number of numbers that appeared twice in my sample. Uh, so that means they appear at least four times across Pascal's triangle uh, because we're not forgetting those consecutive integer diagonals that I left out. Um, so a huge number of numbers, but if you go past that, uh, then we get hardly any. Um, and actually any numbers I found that appeared at least five times also uh, appeared at least six times across the triangle necessarily. Um, so that's where I'm going to start. So these numbers appear at least six times across the triangle. So you can see they're composite. Actually, I'll just stop those ones there. They, ha they have to be composite. Um, the prime numbers, apart from two, only appear twice, and that's in the consecutive integer diagonals. Um, and these two appear exactly six times across the whole triangle. And I know that because I went to row 500. Uh, and so if you go to any row, so let's say you go to row n, uh, the smallest number that will appear in that row apart from one is n. Uh, and so if we go to row 210, uh, that's the final time uh, that 210 is going to appear. Um, and uh, 120 will have appe stopped appearing a long time ago, so these definitely only appear six times. But that's not true of the other numbers, they appear at least six times. Uh, actually, 3003 appears at least eight times across the triangle. So I was looking for a pattern, they're a similar size. Um, I couldn't see any... Pat what? 
Wow. <laughs> so that is why that is my favorite mega number. Uh, so in case you missed that, that was this number here, uh, which is about six times 10 to the 28, um, or otherwise known as quite a large number. Uh, and so this number is, is the largest number that my computer could find with that search that appears at least six times across Pascal's triangle. And mathematicians know that this is the next one in the sequence. So there are no numbers between 24,000-ish, uh, that one we saw at the end, and this number that appear at least six six times in the triangle, which is just amazing. It's a huge gap. And so I was looking at this, wondering why this happened, um, looking for patterns in these numbers and where they appear, and I wasn't having much luck. Uh, and so I took this number and of course I Googled it. Uh, and I discovered that lots of other people have done this too, they've done work on this area before, um, uh, including mathematician David Singmaster, who's, uh, who's found out all sorts of things um, about Pascal's triangle and numbers that repeat in it. Um, and he looked at these numbers and he looked at patterns in where they appear. And so those patterns appear in these two numbers. We can see that 3003 um, occurs at 15 choose 5 and then at 14 choose 6. So we're decreasing n by 1 and increasing r by 1. And the same pattern appears for my favourite mega number down there. And that pattern can be expressed like this. Um, and any numbers that fit that pattern, so that solve that equation, will appear at least six times in Pascal's triangle. Because each of those occurrences will have a symmetrical one, so that's four in total, um, and then they will appear twice in those consecutive integer diagonals. So they'll appear at least six times. And so I thought, well, I'm going to see if I can find any other solutions that fit this form. Um, so I used the formula for n choose r and made this equation, um, and then did some rearrangements uh, and got n in terms of r um, so that I could just stick it into Python. And so I found n values uh, for a huge range of r values and then got the computer to check that those n values were positive integers and were greater than r. Uh, I've got some notes about that underneath in case you're interested, um, but I found just two solutions. Um, here we go, within the range I was, I was looking for. I mean, they're not tiny, um, uh, you know, there we go. Um, even bigger solutions, uh, but the most exciting thing about all of these solutions is that they can all be expressed by using Fibonacci numbers. And so David Singmaster showed that the n and the r values can be expressed like this, where f1 is the first one in the Fibonacci sequence. But it gets even more exciting than that. He also proved that all of the n and the r values that we can generate using positive integer values of i, of which there are an infinite number, are all solutions to that equation that we were just looking at. So there are an infinite number of solutions to that equation. They can all be expressed using Fibonacci numbers. And of that infinite number of solutions, my favourite mega number is just the second. So we get this number when i is 2, and when i is 1, we get 3003. And so if there are an infinite number of solutions, that means that there are an infinite number of numbers that appear at least six times in Pascal's triangle. Uh, so this is amazing, and I've linked to the proof below so you can have a look at it. Uh, but it doesn't stop there. We can then ask ourselves, well, do we know that there are any numbers uh, that definitely appear more than six times? Well, actually, 3003 uh, appears at least eight times, but other than that, we don't know. We don't know if there are any numbers that appear more times than eight for sure. Uh, we don't know what the highest number of times any number can appear in Pascal's triangle is. We don't know what that upper bound is. Uh, David Singh must have conjectured that it might be 10 or 12, something quite low, but we don't know. So that's an open bit of mathematics. Maybe it's for you to have, go and have a look at. Uh, but otherwise, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I hope that my favourite mega number is now your favourite mega number too. Thank you very much for watching.